Hello, everybody. My name's Alan. I'm one of the co-founders at uh, Run Reveal. My other co-founder, Evan's over there. Uh, we're actually happy users of Sentry, so it's good to know that they're built on uh, <laughs> strong technology. Um, but we're also, of course, happy users of ClickHouse. Today, I'm going to talk about some uh, lesser known features of ClickHouse. At least I didn't know about them until, um, you know, I've been using ClickHouse for a long time. and. There's always a time where I come across a feature and I'm like, oh, that's, that's exactly what we need. Maybe some of you else, uh, some others in here have felt that way too. Um, but first, let me tell you a little bit about how I came to ClickHouse. It was released to open source in 2016 and the first day it was, uh, Cloudflare started using it. So there we go. <laughs> uh, pretty much the first day anyway. So I was on the data team at Cloudflare uh, where there were some of the first very early adopters of ClickHouse after it was open source. And uh, after that, I went to Segment, where I kind of brought it over as part of a Hack Week project, and now it's deployed in a lot of places there. But now, uh, Evan and I, we're starting a company called Run Reveal, which is a security data and automation platform. Just to set the context a little bit about how we came to use ClickHouse and why we chose to use ClickHouse, uh, I just want you all to imagine that you're on a security team and you're uh, tasked with being able to detect whether or not uh, some contractor was compromised in uh, some sort of social engineering attack. The reality is it's a really hard problem uh, because there's so much data in the world. Everybody is signing up with these uh, SaaS apps. Uh, I like to say that people pick SaaS apps like uh, picking groceries in the grocery store because people just sign up for whatever. Uh, SSO makes it so easy and all of a sudden your company's data is being shared with parties that uh, the business had no consent giving to. Companies are spending millions of dollars on these new like shadow IT companies just to be able to discover these. So it's like a very uh, intractable problem. Um, so we kind of believe that security has an observability problem and that really starts with just collecting the data, trying to figure out how to uh, integrate with and collect these audit logs from all these SaaS applications. And then you can start to digest what is actually going on in your infrastructure. We believe it shouldn't be as hard as it is today. Um, we believe it should just be as easy as clicking a button. You know, Evan and I, we both worked at Cloudflare and Segment, and we saw the power of just being able to turn something on and start using it. So we're really trying to channel that simplicity into our app and into our product so that you know, people can start to gain the benefits of this. And I, I hope that you see some of the things that we're using ClickHouse for uh, kind of really demonstrate that simplicity. But where do we start? Um, I've got a lot of quotes in here. <laughs> But this is probably my favorite. Uh, you all are probably working as data engineers. I used to work uh, under Albert Strassheim. Uh, and he liked to say that managing data is difficult. So imagine you're an ant in a snow globe the size of Jupiter, and you're tasked with catching every single snowflake and sorting them by shape before they hit the ground. And that's really the experience we have of managing data at scale. That's really what uh, I like to think about when I'm trying to figure out these really big data problems. And really what it comes down to is this. Uh, this is my one key takeaway from working under Albert is that uh, streaming data is really easy, but streaming it reliably is very difficult. And the way that you can really manage that, the way that you beat that, um, the way that you make things more reliable is to just simplify Simplify, simplify. And so now we're finally getting to the ClickHouse part, which is uh, we have ClickHouse. Um, I don't need to explain to anybody here why we picked it. It'd be like preaching to the choir. Everybody here is a big fan. Um, we chose it because it's fast, uh, but ultimately it simplified our architecture massively. Uh, we, this is a kind of a diagram of our current architecture. Uh, at Run Reveal, we have a handful of sources, or like dozens now. Um, we ingest them into a single like monolithic application. 
Uh, and then we are running checks, we're running triggers on that data to see if there's anything that needs to be alerted on in real time. But we're also writing those events to ClickHouse to be analyzed in ClickHouse itself using scheduled queries, which is another feature of our, our product. And then we send out alerts to um, whatever channels people configure it to. Uh, and ClickHouse really helps enable that simplicity uh, because it pretty much has like everything that we need out of the box. And of course, it's like wicked fast. Uh, I just want to plug our open source event streaming project real quick. This is kind of how everything gets into ClickHouse. Um, it's just a really, it's still pretty alpha software, I will, I'll say that, but like, um, I think the abstractions in this are really powerful and allow us to uh, collect data of many different shapes. It's using generics to stream uh, any kind of data into any other destination, but uh, ClickHouse um, is one of those destinations and we're pretty much built on it fully right now. Let's talk about some of the lesser known features which you all came here to see. Uh, first of all, ClickHouse has amazing support for uh, geo features. So it has uh, this function called geohashing code where you pass in a latitude and a longitude and it gives you back the geohash. And geohashes are very useful because they can basically group uh, similar locations into um, a hash which is configurable it breaks up the world into basically a ton of little squares and where those squares are and how big those squares are are dependent on the things that you pass into the function. Um, so here we're not uh, limiting the size of the squares at all, so it should be pretty uh, small. But here, this query is what is generating these graphs which show um, on the left side, it's Google Workspace access logs. So if you're sensitive to um, where your Google Workspace is being accessed from, then you can see like it's all in the United States where our team is working uh, versus our web access logs, which is all over the globe. Uh, candidly, like all of these other ones are just uh, little um, pingers. They're uh, monitors that are from Grafana. So they aren't really doing much, but it does illustrate that you can visually see very quickly uh, where things are being accessed from. And uh, that's really what security teams need to be able to make informed decisions. Um, and I just love how beautifully simple this short uh, query is. Um, they're gonna get a lot more complicated, so hold on to your hats. Um, but this one is, yeah, it's pretty handy. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this one, but this is one we're really proud of. It's obviously a lot of code, uh, but it's very powerful. So this is illustrating what we call impossible travel detection, which is really difficult to do in a single, uh, with a single source like Google Workspace or um, some other SaaS app that you're using. But with this, we can do it across any SaaS app that exposes a uh, a source IP um, in their audit logs. And it's you know very powerful uh, tool for security engineers to be able to know like, is this IP being accessed from um, somewhere across the globe when they were just accessing it from somewhere locally. And this is something that people find very hard to do. And the reason why it is so large and complex is because it kind of needs to be. Um, I'll go into it a little bit, but this not only uses some geo functions, so it uses this geo distance function up here, uh, which actually calculates the distance between two points on the globe, um, which is extremely handy when you're trying to calculate speed, of course. Um, but it also uses something called windowing functions. So you see these lag in frames here. What this is doing is this is basically taking, uh, I'll go to the next slide real quick because, oh, this is what windowing is doing. It's comparing two windows of data uh, across one another, which is you know, the only way that we can enable the um, impossible travel in SQL proper, but also it's useful for things like funnels. So at Segment, um, we built some funnels on windows. 
Uh, it's useful pretty much in any context where you have data changing over time and you want to compare one period to another period. And it's very flexible. Um, if you have any kind of use cases where you need uh, to do these comparisons and see changes that are happening in a window, then I highly suggest you check out windowing functions. Um, you know, that query looked pretty crazy, uh, admittedly, but when you break it down into the individual components, it kind of makes sense and is kind of beautiful. So um, this was written by our other teammate who's not here tonight, and I am eternally grateful for his uh, efforts uh, because this is pretty in insane. ClickHouse has continued to grow support for lots of uh, kind of loosely typed or untyped data. Uh, I think in 23.9, they just got like really good uh, JSON um, support for like being able to uh, intuit what the types should be and create that schema. Uh, but before that, uh, they had these JSON functions which allow you to pull out uh, any data from JSON objects. And the way that we're architected right now, we write everything into one big raw data table, which I highly suggest if you're using ClickHouse, like start by putting things into a big raw data table and then build materialized views on top of that. You can always like do other things with the materialized views, but it's a lot harder if you're like inserting into 10 different tables and then trying to get it back into one or figure that out. Um, so in this example, what this query is doing is this is detecting when there are policy violations on GitHub pull requests. So when pull requests have been merged uh, without approval. So this is something that GitHub, I believe, offers as part of their enterprise plan. But we have uh, a couple customers who um, aren't paying for GitHub Enterprise. They don't have a reason to. Uh, so they asked, like, is this possible? And we got kind of curious, so we went and wrote it. Um, I don't think GitHub would be particularly, uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we wanted this, people wanted it. It's uh, useful. You can just get it for free if you sign up and connect a, a GitHub source. But uh, really what I wanted to illustrate is the JSON functions which allow you to interact with uh, raw JSON data in a column and just be able to extract uh, the fields that you need. Um, another thing that was absolutely critical to enabling uh, our product was role-based row -based access control in ClickHouse. So if you are building any kind of multi-tenant application, uh, there are two ways of doing it. Um, one, a simple way with row-based access control, or two, by deploying like a million different instances of uh, ClickHouse and you know, every customer's VPC and everything. So we decided to go with the simple way. Uh, it was a little bit tricky to get set up the first time, but now that we have it set up, it works beautifully. Um, and essentially what this set of queries is doing is showing you uh, an example of how you might do that. So first you need to create the role uh, before you can do anything with it. And then you can grant that role to a particular user. Um, and then you create policies for the rows. So uh, in run reveal, we have everything in that big run reveal logs table that I was telling you about. Um, and we want to grant our users the ability to query the data um, themselves. So we actually will accept SQL queries of our users and let them run it against the database, and only their rows will be returned from the raw data table. Uh, so this is a pretty amazing feature for us because what it allows us to do is run a single ClickHouse cluster to be able to ingest any kind of customer data and expose it to uh, our customers and let them query it, uh, which is really like the first step in, like, in the name of making it really easy to get started. Uh, this allows people to play with it for a little bit before they decide they want to buy it. Uh, now, of course, like security data is uh, the crown jewels of a, a business. So um, they, we also have built the ability to send uh, other click houses. But ultimately, like without this, we wouldn't be able to offer that uh, query any SQL um, or submit any SQL queries to our customers without 
obviously the row based access control. Um, and then we'll see if this works. This is a recorded demo, so I know it works, but uh, this is my first time using Keynote and I've never uh, embedded a video before, so I'll talk through it. Um, so this is Evan, he's back there. This is our UI. Um, one of the other things that we've released, which uh, now ClickHouse has natively in ClickHouse Cloud, is we enabled LLMs to generate the queries. So if you pass in the schema to uh, an LLM or using OpenAI, um, then it makes it really easy to do human queries like this. So this is converting, basically we're asking for the latencies of HTTP logs in the last week. And then it generates this ClickHouse SQL because we've fed it all the ClickHouse documentation and the schemas. And then we can uh, graph it and it's just magical. Um, so this isn't necessarily a ClickHouse feature, but it does demonstrate that uh, this is something that we're submitting directly to the database. Uh, and we're only getting the logs returned for our workspace, which I think is pretty incredible. And um, yeah, I just wanted to plug ClickHouse Cloud as well because like they allowed us to get started um, really easily and really quickly. And uh, I operated ClickHouse at Segment and while it's relatively simple in terms of the architecture, like you don't have to run Zookeeper anymore, which is amazing. Anybody in here run Zookeeper before? Uh, so, uh, but ultimately like starting with the cloud product is the easiest way to get started. Um, and that's what I have for you. So we're run reveal. My name's Alan. I'm caustic most places. 